in the New Cross area of South London, a large four-storey, seven-bedroom mid-terrace property went to auction. But this former office block had been empty for a while. Not only had it fallen into disrepair, but it had been used as a squat and was covered in graffiti. None of this put off 28-year-old developer Sean. I have two options here, I think. One option is to do this place up and let it as individual rooms, probably to students. But then you enter the realms of the HMO, which is House of Multiple Occupancy, and there are all sorts of guidelines and conditions attached. The other option is to divide this place up into individual flats. Now, you would need planning permission for that, and that is never guaranteed. But if you did get permission, I reckon you could fit four flats in that property, one on each floor, and this ground floor flat, well, it could be fabulous. You could extend right the way out here, have big bifold doors opening out to this lovely little garden here. Now, four flats in this area, well, that could really stack up financially. So what appealed to you about this property? It's on a very busy main road. Yeah, it is on a very busy road, but it's the area and its potential. Um, you've now got an East London line which just come into the area, so you can be in Central within sort of four to six minutes, so it's perfect for the first-time buyer as well and a young professional. Um, again, the size of the property, it's got so much scope for what we're looking at to do of a HMO or to convert it to four flats, so it's got a lot of potential. So you looked beyond the dust, the dirt, the grime, the graffiti, the wallpaper. I mean, it's in a right old state, isn't it? It is, yeah. It needs a lot of work doing so. So what do you think you're going to do with this? Convert it into flats? I think it will be, yeah. We're looking, speaking to the council at the moment, we're looking that the best feasible option at the moment would be to do four flats. Sean, give me a rough layout of how the flats are going to be. So we basically work on open plan layouts on the flats. Uh, with the ground floor two-bed flat, we work on an open plan sitting room, dining room, open out into the garden with bifold doors. On the first, second and third floor, all mimic each other's symmetry and it's a case of open floor and living to the front, and bedroom and bathroom to the rear. So will they be one bedroom flats apart from the ground floor? Yes, the first, second and third floors are one bedroom flats. It sounds like this house could be emerging from its own nightmare into a dreamland comparatively. But for that, Sean has to get planning permission to change its use from commercial to residential. If successful, he's got a budget of 120 to 150,000 to get the flat up and running and add that wow factor to attract buyers. Basically, we're looking for the higher end. We always go for corporate lets if we're renting, which is obviously the higher end of the market, or if we're selling, we go for the young professional, which obviously want the highest spec. Time to ask a local estate agent what's the best way forward. As a one entire building, um, as a family home, taking into consideration a very busy road, um, I would anticipate to, for it to achieve around about 500,000 to 520,000 pounds. But if the house was converted into four flats, two two beds and two one bed ones, the final approximate sale figure could be 940,000. Writing on the wall for this former office block. Well, eight and a half months later, we're back. With the security shutters off, new windows and doors and fresh paintwork, the outside shows promise. What about inside? And literally, the only four walls that remained were the outer four walls. We have gutted the building from top to bottom. By ripping it back to a shell, Sean was able to reconfigure the whole building. It was the ground floor where the most significant changes occurred, as it was converted into an amazingly spacious two-bedroom flat by adding a large single-storey extension. OK, so this is the ground floor extension that we've newly built. Um, we've increased the floor area of this flat by 100%. Had a few issues with planning. Uh, the way we've navigated around the planning issues is by incorporating a courtyard area into this flat, which allows ventilation and light well into the back bedroom. Um, really, really happy with the extension. The turnout's obviously a good spec. We've still got to do the floor and the kitchen, which is going to be a galley kitchen in this area here. But yeah, really happy so far. If that extension wasn't enough extra room, the ground floor flat not only had sole access to the garden, but Sean had also built a separate annex at the bottom of the garden, perfect for a study or an office. Whereas upstairs on the first and second floors, there are two one-bedroom flats, both in need of some finishing off, but well on their way. All the flats have solid wood flooring and fully fitted kitchens.
and on the top floor, there's another one-bed flat. So this is the front living dining room for flat four. I'm on the roof, terrace space here on the top floor. Uh, kitchen is sea solid oak worktops, high white gloss units, um, stainless steel oven and hood. Basically the same spec throughout the whole building that we've gone for. Uh, so it works quite well and I'm quite happy with the finish, it looks good.